Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Nayan. So for today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to graph a hyperbola. But of course, before anything else, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Easy Nayan so that you'll be notified with our new videos. And hopefully at the end of this lesson, you will be able to graph a hyperbola. Now let us recall what a hyperbola is. A hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane such that the difference of the distances of each point of the set from the two fixed points which we call a foci is constant. And as seen in this figure, a hyperbola is formed if a plane passes through a double knot cone at exactly the two cones. For a hyperbola, we have two basic orientations. We have the horizontal and the vertical. And in determining whether a hyperbola is a horizontal one or a vertical one, we refer to the standard form of equation. So these are very similar equations, but as you can notice, there is a positive term and a negative term. So if the positive term includes the x variable, we can say that the hyperbola is a horizontal hyperbola. But if the positive term includes the y coordinate, then we can say that this is a vertical hyperbola. And we can see from this figure as an example of a horizontal and a vertical hyperbola. For a horizontal hyperbola, the opening of the curves opens to the right and to the left, while in a vertical hyperbola, the opening includes upwards and downwards. As for the a squared, the a squared is always the denominator of the positive term, while b squared is always the denominator of the negative term. So the following will be very important in determining the other parts of our hyperbola. Now let us recall the parts of a hyperbola. Whether it is a horizontal one or a vertical hyperbola, it will include all of the following parts. Now if you would want an in-depth discussion regarding the parts of a hyperbola, we have a separate video for that and you may want to check it out. Of course, we have the center and then we have the vertices which always has a distance of a from the center. And then we call this a transverse axis, which is a line that passes through the foci, the vertices, and the center. We also have the covertices, which always has a distance of B from the center. And through that, we have a conjugate axis. So a conjugate axis passes through the covertices and the center as well. We have the foci, which is always C units away from the center. And then we call this a fundamental rectangle. The fundamental rectangle connects the vertices and the covertex, which can help us graph our asymptotes because the asymptotes would always pass through the center and as well as the edges of the fundamental rectangle. So this exactly is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. And in graphing a vertical hyperbola, we would have the same parts but in different orientation. So the last thing we are to do right here is to consider the curves of our hyperbola. The curves of the hyperbola shouldn't touch the asymptotes that we have graphed. So the curves of our hyperbola shouldn't touch the asymptotes that we have graphed. Now let us start with this example. We have to graph the hyperbola given this equation. We have the quantity of x minus 3 squared over 6 minus the quantity of y minus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 1. Now, what I would like to do is to determine first the orientation of the hyperbola because this would be necessary in graphing the other parts of our hyperbola. Given that the positive term includes the x variable, then this would be a horizontal hyperbola. And as for the center, I would just need to determine our hk, where h would be beside the x variable and k would be beside the y variable. And so we have the center at 3, 1, which would be at the first quadrant of our graph. Next thing that I would like to do is to determine all of the distances that we would need for the parts. Now we should identify a, b, and c. And to determine those, we need a squared. A squared will always be the denominator of the positive term, which is this one, so a squared is 6. Now to determine a, I would need to get the square root of both sides. Hence, a is equal to the square root of 6 
or 2.45. Now, to determine b squared, b squared will always be below or the denominator of the negative term. So, b squared is equal to 9, getting its square root. We have b is equal to 3. And lastly, to determine c, c will always be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if we substitute all of the values, we have c is equal to the square root of 6 plus 9, which if we simplify it, we have the square root of 15 or 3.87. Now, given these values, it would be helpful in determining the other parts of the hyperbola. Knowing that this is a horizontal hyperbola, it would mean that our vertices would be along the left and the right of our center. And knowing that, it would mean that we should add and subtract a along the x coordinate or we should add and subtract a in our h so to solve for our vertices adding a and subtracting a would be along our h now to determine our first vertices let us try to substitute all of the values that we have so with this one we have 3 plus 2.45 comma 1 and simplifying this one we have our first vertex which is at 5.45 comma 1 and it can be seen as well in our first quadrant now as for our second vertex substituting our values we have 3 minus 2.45 comma 1 simplifying that we have 0 0.55 comma 1 which can also be seen in the first quadrant here exactly in our graph now that we have our vertices let us move on in finding our foci our foci will always be along the right and the left of our center and its distance will always be c. So it means that we need the c value that we have computed earlier and we have to add c and subtract c as well along our x coordinate or at our h. So we have it here and then substituting our values we have 3 plus 3.87 comma 1 which would give us our first focus which is at 6.87 comma 1 which can be seen right here our first focus and then as for our second focus substituting the value such as 3 minus 3.87 comma 1 we have our second focus at negative 0 0.87 comma 1 which can be seen at the second quadrant right here after the focus, we will try to identify the covertices. Now, as for the covertices, we would need the B value. And since this is a horizontal hyperbola, our covertices can be seen on top and at the bottom of our center. And knowing that, it would mean that we need to add and subtract B along the Y coordinate. Hence, we have this here. We have h, k plus b and h, k minus b. Substituting the values that we know, we have 3, 1 plus 3. Simplifying the values, we have 3, 4 as our first covertex. And here we have our first covertex. As for our second covertex, let us try to substitute the values of 3, 1 minus 3. Simplifying that, we have our second covertex at 3, negative 2, which can be seen at the fourth quadrant. Now that we have completed all of the points, the next thing to do is to solve for our asymptote. As for our asymptotes, since this is a horizontal hyperbola, we should use the equation y minus k is equal to positive negative b over a times x minus h. Now we know the value of k h and b and a as well so just simplifying those we have y minus 1 is equal to positive negative 3 over square root of 6 times x minus 3 now since there is a radical in our denominator we need to simplify them hence we have y minus 1 is equal to positive and negative square root of 6 over 2 multiplied by the quantity of x minus 3 so this equation represents the two equations of our asymptotes. Now in graphing our asymptotes, we must need to graph first the fundamental rectangle. And the fundamental rectangle just connects the covertices and the vertices as well, such as this one. And then in graphing the asymptote, we just need to connect the center and the edges of our rectangle like this. 
and this one as well. So we have two lines for the asymptotes and as well two equations in representing our asymptotes. Now, we are to graph our transverse axis, which is a line that intersects the foci and the vertices in our center. This is here, the green one. And then as for our conjugate axis, it is along our covertex in our center. And finally, we are to graph the curves of our hyperbola, where it starts at the vertex and then goes closer and closer to the asymptote but never touch. So this is how we graph a hyperbola. I hope that you learned a lot throughout this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you in our next one. This has been Isip Nayan.